Hi guys, welcome aboard my new sailboat Athena. I arrived here in the small Scottish village of Kirkcurpry around 9 o'clock last night and I basically went straight to bed. I was pretty tired after the long trip over here. So I spent the first part of today with the previous owner going over the boat and I've also been out shopping for some diesel and some groceries. But uh, now I'm finally ready to get started on some of the jobs that I want to get out of the way before we push off on Tuesday. The first order of business is to take care of the engine. So I've ordered some new oil. I've also ordered a new drive belt and I actually don't know if this needs to be replaced but we'll find out. I also have a new air filter and then I have a service kit and this contains a new oil filter, a new fuel filter and a new impeller. Luckily engine access here aboard Athena is pretty good. We start off by removing the companionway steps. There's also a hatch in each of the two aft cabins that we can remove to gain better access to the engine. This one is in the port side aft cabin. And this is the starboard side hatch. Let's start out by taking care of the least messy job, which is going to be to replace the air filter. On this Volvo D240F that should be very easy. It's just a matter of loosening this hose clamp and undoing this bolt down here. And there we go. And of course putting in the new air filter is just a matter of reversing that process. And just like that Athena has a brand new air filter. Looking at the old air filter it doesn't actually look all that bad but uh, at least now I know that I've changed it in 2016. So if we continue in the order of least messy job first, the next job will be to replace the impeller which is included in this service kit. There we go. I've already made sure that the raw water intake seacog is closed so now it's just a matter of removing the front plate here on the raw water pump and making sure not to drop these little screws into the abyss that is the bilge. Now we're ready to remove the old impeller and if we look at it we can see that we need to install the new impeller with a clockwise rotation. It might be difficult to see on camera because it's a little bit dark but uh, this is a clockwise rotation. So let's go ahead and remove the impeller. There we go. There are no visible cracks or any other sign uh, that this needs to be changed so this will go in the spare parts bin. The housing looks to be in great condition so I'll just go ahead and clean this and the uh, faceplate a little bit. This is just to remove the old paper gasket. Any old little pieces of paper need to be removed. Now that I've cleaned both the housing and the cover I'll go ahead and apply some of this glycerin to the inside of the housing and also to the cover. Let's go ahead and get the impeller in there and remember that we need to use a clockwise rotation on this. There we go. I've placed the paper gasket on the cover so let's go ahead and get the cover back on the raw water pump. And just like that Athena has a new impeller. She's fast becoming a brand new boat. Let's move on to the next job. I want to change the oil. Let's go ahead and run the engine for a while just to heat up the oil. That will make it easier for us to suck out the old oil. And for those of you playing along at home, don't worry, I've already opened the raw water intake. Now that the engine is running I'm also charging the batteries which is probably a really good idea considering the state of the mains battery charger here aboard Athena. I've had the battery charger on since yesterday and still just before switching on the engine I noticed that I was down by 15 amp hours. Hmm, it's not really a good charger I think. Luckily while the engine is running I'm putting in 32 amps right now and we still have 8.7 amps to go. The engine is nice and warm now so let's go ahead and turn it off. Ah, silence. 
Now, to be absolutely fair, the previous owner of Athena did mention the battery charger before I purchased the boat, and he recommended that I uh, replace it as soon as possible, and I can certainly see why. And I do plan on doing that as soon as we get back home to Denmark. The previous owner was kind enough to leave behind this electric pump for pumping out the old engine oil, and he was also kind enough to leave behind this canister for that oil. So I'll go ahead and uh, hook this up. I'll insert this tube into the engine and switch on the pump. Ah. The pump wasn't able to extract any more oil from the engine. I've done a quick calculation and there's roughly 6 litres of oil in the bucket. The engine is rated at 6.4 litres and I haven't replaced the filter yet so there's probably a little bit of oil in there too. So yeah, 6 litres in that bucket is perfectly fine by me. Let's go ahead and replace that filter. Oil filter. That's the oil filter down there. Now there are several ways of doing this. I've heard from some people that use a screwdriver or another sharp object to poke a hole in the oil filter to help drain the last of the oil. I usually just throw some paper towel underneath the oil filter. Let's see how this goes. Righty tidy lefty loosey. Yeah. Ah, they're usually on there pretty good. But just like in real life, there aren't a lot of issues about a boat that can't be solved with a bit of bike chain. There we go. There we go. Now we just need to lubricate the seal on the uh, new filter with a bit of oil. And on it goes. There's no need to over tighten an oil filter, just tighten it until it's got good contact and then tighten it another half turn, no more. Let's go ahead and get some oil in the engine. I've added 6 liters of oil, so next step is to run the engine until it gets warm and uh, then we'll check the oil level. I've checked the dipstick and the oil level is just a hair under the uh, max indication, so yeah, that's more luck than skill to be honest. Now I want to move on to something else. I want to see if I can hook up the AIS transponder and splitter I had aboard Oblix to the chart plotter here aboard Athena. This is the chart plotter in question. It's the Standard Horizon CP300i. When the previous owner and I went over the boat earlier today, I asked him where the wires from the chart plotter went and he told me that they're in here. So let's crack this open and see if we can find the right wires. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, this might look a little bit messy, but it's actually not all that bad. I know that the switch down here is used to turn on and off the power for the chat plotter. So it's just a matter of tracing this wire right here, which goes in through that hole over there. The wires that go through that hole goes into this locker right here. Just going by the looks of this one, it might be this one. So let's just peel back the outer layer of insulation on this and check what kind of uh, wires are in there. Brown, blue, grey, green, yellow and white. That matches exactly the uh, colours of the wires that are supposed to be coming from the chart plotter. But let's just do one more check to make absolutely sure. That, my friends, is the sound of success. I don't know if you're able to hear that, but there's continuity between the grey wire inside the cupboard and this. So that's good. Now that we know that the bundle of cables inside the locker is from the chart plotter, it's just a matter of checking the manual. And here we see that they have an AIS device connected to a grey and a green wire. Now that we know that the chart plotter has an NMEA input on the grey and the green wires, all we need to do now is to consult the manual for the AIS transponder to see which two wires to hook up to the chart plotter. This is the manual for my Digital Yacht AIT2000 AIS transponder and here we see that the orange and the brown wires are intended for a high speed NMEA 0183 output intended for connection to chart plotters. So I'm guessing we're supposed to use the orange and the brown. So this is what I think will work. Over here we've got the chart plotter and over here we've got the AIS transponder. So orange 
from the AIS transponder to gray on the chat plotter and then from the AIS transponder we take brown wire and connect to the green wire from the chat plotter. I don't really fancy spending a lot of time making good connections before I'm absolutely sure that this is going to work. That's why I've brought along these little quick connection thingies which are very handy for something like this. I've attached this to the gray wire so now we just need to put in the orange wire. Of course, we still need to siphon off a bit of power for the uh, AIS transponder and also for the splitter. So I've noticed that even though the switch for uh, turning on and off the power for the instrument is in the off position, this still has power. So I've just gone ahead and hooked up the uh, VHF antenna and everything else just to make sure that nothing bad happens when I connect the last wires here. Here on the bottom we have the AIS transponder and there are no indications of fault here so that's good and I just noticed that this light up here flashed yellow just a few seconds ago and that actually means that some sort of uh, AIS transmittance has, has occurred so uh, Everything should be good now. I just opened up the uh, configuration app for the AIS transponder because I needed to change the name, but also because I wanted to make sure that we were actually sending and receiving data. So if we look under the Diagnostics tab, all of these green check marks here means that, well, everything is okay, basically. And uh, we've got a voltage standing wave, wave ratio of 1.7, which is not as good as a board Oblix, but it'll do. Okay, so this is the uh, chat plotter. Um, I've just switched it on and I've noticed that it says data off up here and I don't really like that. So uh, I think I'll just have a quick look in the manual. Okay, so lots of good news here. That thing, the thing I was worried about saying data off, not important at all, it doesn't matter. It's, it's something silly. Um, so I've just gone through and uh, done the setup as described in the uh, manual and basically it is very easy it is just a matter of going into the advanced setup input and output connections and setting port 2 because of the wires we choose to use to AIS 38400 and then if we go into this menu we should be able to see some data just by looking at these NMEA strings, this is clearly AIS data, so woohoo! And we might actually be able to see another boat down here. See that thing right there? Okay, so we don't have its name, but we can see that it's basically not moving, and uh, we have their MMSI number. So, big win! So it looks like my AIS transponder is working, which is awesome. I just had a quick peek at marinetraffic.com and vesselfinder.com. None of those two sites can actually see my boat, but they can't see the boat next to me either, the one we saw up on the chat plotter. So it might just be that there's no base station covering this area, so there's no need to worry yet. And I think the uh, next thing, and that's probably the last thing I'll get done today, is to top off the diesel tank. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, earlier today I went out and I got my hands on 40 liters of diesel. The previous owner left behind this trolley, which is awesome, but sadly it, uh, it lost a screw here. So it wasn't really all that much help, but there's a really nice guy that offered me a lift back to the marina with the uh, 40 liters of diesel. But I think this will be a nice project for tomorrow to see if I can find a screw that fits in there. You might be wondering why on earth I would include this in the video. But basically I wanted to show you that clever thing from transferring diesel from the uh, jerry can to the tank. And I also want to show you the very advanced fuel gauge here aboard Athena. So we're back in the engine compartment here and what you're seeing over here, I know it's very dark, but that's the diesel tank. And on the diesel tank, it's right about there, there's a pipe or a hose actually. And that's see-through and that is the only fuel gauge here aboard Athena. So figuring out how much fuel you've got aboard is done by holding our light to this hose and then seeing where the level is. Now that the diesel tank is topped off, I think I'm gonna call it a day. It's getting a little bit late here and I am extremely tired. I've been up since five o'clock. I don't know if I'll have time to, to edit and publish this video tonight, but uh, in the off chance that I do, I thought I'd mention that if you're coming here for the boat warming thingy that's tomorrow on Sunday and uh, you should keep an eye out for this big sign right next to the gate for the uh, pontoon here in the marina. Next to this sign will be this little radio here and uh, 
if the gate is locked, which is most likely, uh, just go ahead and use this little radio and I'll be right up to let you in. Okay guys, that is gonna be it for this video. See you! Jukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe. Please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order.